35, Exodus 35, 1, tonight. Moses then convoked the whole Israelite community and said to them, these are the things that the eternal has commanded you to do. On six days, work may be done, but on the seventh day, you shall have a Sabbath of complete rest, holy to the eternal. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire through your settlements on the Sabbath day. Moses said further to the whole community of the Israelites, this is what the eternal has commanded. Take from among you gifts to the eternal. Everyone whose heart is so moved shall bring them gifts for the eternal, gold, silver, copper, blue, purple, and crimson yarns, fine linen, and goat's hair, tanned ram skins, dolphin skins, and us wood oil for lighting spices for the anointing oil and for the aromatic incense lapis lazuli and other stones for setting for the ephod and the breastplate and let all among you who are skilled come and make all that the eternal has commanded the tabernacle its tent and its coverings its clasps and its planks its bars, its posts, in its sockets, the ark and its poles, the cover and the curtain for the screen, the table and its poles and all its utensils, and the bread of display, the lampstand for lighting, its furnishings and its lamps, and the oil for lighting, the altar of incense and its poles, the anointing oil and the aromatic incense, and the entrance screen for the entrance of the tabernacle. The altar of burnt offering, its copper grating, its poles, and all its furnishings, the laver and its stand, the hangings of the enclosure, its posts and its sockets, and the screen for the gate of the court, the pegs for the tabernacle, the pegs for the enclosure, and their cords, the service vestments for officiating in the sanctuary, the sacral vestments of Aaron the priest, and the vestments of his sons for priestly service. Okay, Annie, hold, hold on just one second. Uh, Michael, let, let, let me make a comment. We started uh, at the very beginning with the, we're calling them the Israelites. And now Annie is going to talk to, uh, yeah, okay, so if you, if you go to the beginning, you didn't have, okay. The so, Israelite community. Well, yeah. Okay, the Israelite. Okay, before that, we were called the multitudes. So why all of a sudden are we called the Israelites in the Bible? Mm, I want to, I want to go down to the commentary real badly. <laughs> Uh, let me see if I can peek down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're cheating, Michael. I know, I know. Uh, why, why are we called the Israelites? Uh, the people of God, right? Before we were called the multitude. No, we were not. Or Am, which is... Uh, um, Braca has a... Braca Dr. Mike. Why, why, Dr. why, why Dr. are we called the Israelites? Dr. Mike. Yes. We left... The Israelites left Egypt and also the mixed multitude. Yeah, but that, that's they not what came I, with us. We were not part of the mixed multitude. I, I, but why are we now called specifically the Israelites? Because we have the covenant. Uh, well, we, we enter into a covenant, uh, you know, at Mount Sinai, but now we're a little bit beyond that. Mm. I was trying. <laughs> okay, that, 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 that was a good point. Okay, so the, the, this is a long portion. Yeah, okay. yeah. Because these these were the people who were left after the ones who did the sin of the golden cow. Ah. Oh, I got gotcha. you. The Israelites are the pure ones. Got you. So uh. they they chose God over the golden calf. I got you. So they are the people of God. I got you. Now we're the people of God. Oh. Oh, ah, that makes sense. All right, we're at 20. Annie, keep so, going. Yeah, oh, absolutely. We're just going to plow ahead. So the whole community of the Israelites left Moses' presence. And everyone who excelled in ability and everyone whose spirit was moved came, bringing to the eternal an offering for the work of the tent of meeting and for all its service and for the sacred vestments. Men and women, all whose hearts moved them, all who would make an elevation offering of gold to the eternal, 
came bringing brooches, earrings, rings, and pendants, gold objects of all kinds. And everyone who possessed blue, purple, and crimson yarns, fine linen, goat's hair, tanned ram skins, and dolphin skins brought them. Everyone who would make gifts of silver or copper brought them as gifts for the eternal. And everyone who possessed acacia, how do you say that word? Acacia. Acacia wood for any work of the service brought that. And all the skilled women spun with their own hands and brought what they had spun in blue, purple, and crimson yarns and in fine linen. And all the women who excelled in that skill spun the goat's hair. And the chieftains brought lapis lazuli and other stones for setting for the ephod and for the breastplate and spices and oil for lighting for the anointing oil and for the aromatic incense. Thus the Israel lights all the men and women whose hearts move them to bring anything for the work that the eternal through Moses had commanded to be done brought it as a free will offering to the eternal and Moses said to the Israelites see the eternal has singled out by name Bezalel the son of Uri son of Ur the tribe of Judah endowing him with a divine spirit of skill, ability, and knowledge of every kind of craft, and inspiring him to make designs for work in gold, silver, and copper, and to cut stones for setting, and to carve wood, to work in every kind of designer's craft, and to give directions. He and Oholib, son of Ahishma, sorry if I'm butchering these words, of the tribe of Dan, have been endowed with all the skill to do any work of the carver, the designer, the embroiderer in blue, purple, crimson yarns, and in fine linen, and of the weaver as workers in all crafts and as makers of designs. Let them, Bezalel and Ohalib, and all the skilled persons whom the Eternal has endowed with skill and ability to perform expertly all the tasks connected with the service of the sanctuary, carry out all that the Eternal has commanded. Bezalel's uh, father of Gary Gillette. Ah! <laughs> no, according to Shalom, that's what Shalom calls me, Bezalel. God bless him. Bezalel. So flattered. <laughs> love it. Keep going, Annie, please. Moses then called Bezalel and Ohalib and every skilled person whom the Eternal had endowed with skill, everyone who excelled in ability to undertake the task and carry it out. They took over from Moses all the gifts that the Israelites had brought to carry out the task connected with the service of the sanctuary. But when these continued to bring free will offerings to him, morning after morning, all the artisans who were engaged in the tasks of the sanctuary came from the task upon each one was engaged and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than is needed for the tasks entailed in the work that the eternal has commanded to be done. Moses thereupon had his proclamation made throughout the camp. Let no man or woman make further effort towards gifts for the sanctuary. So the people stopped bringing. Their efforts had been more than enough for all the tasks to be done. Then the skilled among those engaged in the work made the tabernacle of 10 strips of cloth, which they made of fine twisted linen, blue, purple, and crimson yarns. Into these, they worked a design of cherubim. The length of each cloth was 28 cubits and the width of each cloth was four cubits all cloths having the same measurements. They joined five of the cloths to one another and they joined the other five cloths to another. They made loops of blue wool on the edge of the outer post cloth of one set and did the same on the edge of the outermost cloth of the other set. They made 50 loops on the one cloth and they made 50 loops on the edge of the end of the cloth of the other set, the loops being opposite one another and they made 50 gold clasps and coupled the units to one another with the clasps so that the tabernacle became one whole. I really feel like there's a tabernacle getting built here spiritually, metaphysically. I really feel it. I hope you do too. 
All yeah. right. <laughs> That's well, cool. and it's like everybody's contributing to it some in some way, shape, or form. Like it's built by everyone. It's not built. You know, everybody has a different skill or a different thing that they're offering to to yeah, make it rumor. happen. That's everybody. Yeah, it's the collection of everybody's. It's the sum total of all the Taruma. Yeah, not just like find not not just monetarily, but materials, <laughs> skills. Right. What it's what our own you know sanctuaries represent. Exactly, and and everyone at this point, everyone gave more than that was needed. That's absolutely beautiful. That's an that doesn't problem. ever happen in our sanctuaries. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately. Do you want to keep going, to Annie, or do you want to pass it off to somebody? I don't care. Whatever. Okay. Why don't we finish up the page, and we'll maybe we'll have someone else. They made cloths of goat hair for for a tent over the tabernacle. They made the cloths 11 in number. The length of each cloth was 30 cubits and the widths of each cloth was four cubits. The 11 cloths having the same measurements. They joined five of the cloths by themselves and the other six cloths by themselves. They made 50 loops on the edge of the outermost cloth of one set and they made 50 loops on the edge of the end of the cloth of the other set. They made 50 copper clasps to couple the tent together so that it might become one whole. And they made a covering of tanned ram skins for the tent and a covering of dolphin skins above. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. How about, um, there's just so much here. It's amazing because I actually, I actually went, I think it was last week, I went to a Zoom that my friend uh, Rabbi Shalom Proust had. He's a rabbi at the Chabad in Newton. And he was actually talking, they were talking about reincarnation. Can you hear me okay? I don't know if I'm too close. Yep. To yeah. um, he was talking about reincarnation in the Jewish tradition, which is more, I think, more has to do with Kabbalah. But um, one of the things that he mentioned is, and I was just like, I get floored with a lot of this knowledge because he, his whole thing is one of the things that we are reincarnated to do is to study Torah and actually each of us has a portion that we are destined to reveal. Now, that's, I was like, wow, that sounds awesome. Because I feel like we're sort of doing that a little bit here, or we're at least flexing our muscles to get there, right? I think we do yeah. it a little bit. Anyway, what do you think of that? Hmm. Sounds like a good idea. <laughs> Dr. Michael, what, what do you think of that? Well, you know, you're, you, you, tonight you're going very deep, Mike. <laughs> I know, because one of the things is they said is that the, the Torah actually, because I think I was talking, we were talking about how sometimes it, it's at a deep level. He says there's four layers to it. One is just the words, as we know. The other is maybe the story. And, and, but there's four levels. And I was like, wow, now we're getting, now that's deep. All, all right, Michael, I, I think that, uh, you, you know, we... we you know, we, we really don't talk about the Kabbalah. <laughs> you know, you know, okay, but that is 100% Kabbalah. Awesome. Who wants to go next? Cynthia, how about trying it? I don't know if your internet's going to make it, but we'll try. How about if you go on number 20? Planks for the, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Oh, okay. Fine. Okay. They made the planks for the tabernacle of acacia wood upright. The length of each plank was 10 cubits. A cubit and a half. Each plank had two tenons parallel to each other. They did the same with all the planks of the tabernacle. Of the planks of the tabernacle, they made 20 planks for the south side. <coughs> Excuse me. That's okay. Making 40 silver sockets under the 20 planks, two sockets under one plank for its two tenons, and two sockets under each following plank for the two tenons. And, the, and for the other side wall of the tabernacle, the north side, 20 planks. With their 40 silver sockets, two sockets under one plank, and two sockets under each following plank. And for the rear of the tabernacle to the west, they made six planks. And they made two planks for the corners of the tabernacle at the rear. They matched at the bottom, but terminated at one at the top into one ring. They did so with both of them at the two corners. Thus, eight planks with their sockets of silver, 16 sockets, two under each plank. Okay, I think we're having an issue with the yeah. audio a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, 
Cynthia, can I can I pick it up for you? Sure. Okay, sure. thank you, hon. I will take umbrage. <laughs> <laughs> we love having you back. I definitely do. Uh, they made bars of acacia wood, five for the planks of the one side wall of the tabernacle, five bars for the planks of the other side wall of the tabernacle, and five bars for the planks of the wall of the tabernacle at the rear to the west. They made the center bar to run halfway up the planks from end to end. They overlaid the planks with gold and made their rings of gold as holders for the bars, and they overlaid the bars with gold. They made the curtain of blue, purple, and crimson yarn and fine twisted linen, working into its design of cherubim. They made, they made for it four posts of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold, with their hooks of gold, and they cast for them four silver sockets. They made the screen for the entrance of the tent of blue, purple, and crimson yarns and fine twisted linen done in embroidery and five posts for it with their hooks. They overlaid their tops and their bands with gold, but the five sockets were of copper. Bezalel made the ark of acacia wood, two and a half cubits long, a cubit and a half wide, and a cubit and a half high. He overlaid it with pure gold inside and out, and he made a gold molding for it around about. He cast four gold rings for it for its feet, two rings on one of its side walls, and two rings on the other. He made poles of acacia wood, overlaid them with gold, and inserted the poles into the rings on the side walls of the ark for carrying the ark. He made a cover of pure gold and two and a half cubits long and, cu and a cubit and a half wide. He made two cherubim of gold. He made them of hammered work in, at the two ends of the cover, one cherub at one end and the other cherub at the other end. He made the cherub of one piece with the cover at its two ends. The cherubim had their wings spread out above, shielding the cover with their wings. They faced each other. The faces of the cherubim were turned toward the cover. He made the table of acacia. I should stop here. Is anyone having a vision of this or a movie that can't, comes to mind? What is it, Dr. Michael or anybody just blurted out? <laughs> Well, you know, um, in from the Ark of the Covenant, you know, the cherubim were, you know, one was on, uh, both of them were on top, looking at each other, and their wings were just about touching, yeah, uh, right, right in the center uh, of of the enclosure. Like Raiders of the Lost Ark. There you go, Doctor Red's with us, and he nails it. He nails it. <laughs> he nails the trivia, <laughs> the trivia night. Yeah, Spiel Spielberg. Yeah, he Spielberg had that whole thing. He made, it came, comes from this, right? The yeah. other thing I'm thinking too is that King David. When when does King David come into the picture? Like a thousand years later, he's oh, yeah. he's the one trying to carry this around still, and it's still around. I mean, it's like yeah, yeah. And remember that uh, you know he was dancing in front uh, as they were carrying it into the uh, temple, uh, in, into the there wasn't a temple at that time into the uh, palace. He, right. he was dancing in front of it. But Michael, you know, I I think that uh, you know we have read enough so far, so I can make the following point. Let's look at what we have read so far from thirty thousand feet. Okay. We, we mentioned the important things such as the Sabbath in a couple of little paragraphs and everything else that we talk about is the construction of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? It is. It is. It's how important is it, right? Yeah. How important is it to get the details right? And also, as I'm hearing, the, you know, as I'm reading the words linen, and all the, and it's so, and it's so, uh, the, the repetitiveness is actually a real benefit for me because of the, it just brings in the blue, the purple, the, the gold, the gold. I mean, it's just such rich, rich stuff. And I think, I think all of our society is kind of based around this and these ideas because there's that song like by, by Elton John, Lay Me Down in Sheets of Linen. You know, that we sang. Yeah. <laughs> there's so many, there's so much that is Debbie, Debbie Harry also sings that in uh, Call Me. <laughs> Does she? Honestly? Really? Lennon? Wrap me up in designer sheet. Well, designer sheet. Yeah, no, nah, it's a little different. Yeah. It's together. It. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Never mind. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> 
<laughs> he made the table of acacia wood two cubits long, one cubit wide, and a cubit and a half high. He overlaid it with pure gold and made a gold molding around it. He made a rim of a hand's breadth around it and made a gold molding for its rim round about. He cast four gold rings for it and attached the rings to the four corners at its four legs. The rings were next to the rim as holders for the poles to carry the table. He made the poles of acacia wood for carrying the table and overlaid them with gold. The utensils that were to be upon the table, its bowls, ladles, jugs, and jars with which to offer libations, he made of pure gold. He made the lampstand of pure gold. He made the lampstand at its base, its shaft of hammered work, its cups, calyxes, and petals were of one piece with it. Okay, Michael, hold on for just one second. Yep. Um, if we read in here, the lampstand, which is the, the menorah, is, uh. is pure gold. That's awesome. Everything else was acacia wood that is overlaid with gold. So it looks like gold, but it's acacia wood. The, the uh, menorah is pure gold. Nice. See it? Yep, yeah, there it is. Six, six branches issued from its sides, three branches from one side of the lampstand and three br branches from the other side of the lampstand. So the lampstand is that middle piece. Yeah, the, right. Okay, so there's three and three and one in the middle. Okay. That's right. The shamus is in the middle. Shamus. Okay. There were three cups shaped like almond blossoms, each with calyx and petals on one branch. And there were three cups shaped like almond blossoms, each with calyx and petals on the next branch. So for all six branches issuing from the lampstand. On the lampstand itself, there were four cups shaped like almond blossoms, each with calyx and petals a calyx of one piece with it under a pair of branches and a calyx of one piece with it under the second pair of branches and a calyx of one piece with it under the last pair of branches. So for all six branches issuing from it. Their calyxes and their stems were of one piece with it. The whole of it is a singled hammered piece of pure gold. Whoa. He made it seven lamps, its tongs and its fire pans of pure gold. He made it and all its furnishings out of a talent of pure gold. And a talent is a measure, right? A measure of Can you imagine that? Like all out of one piece of gold? Yeah, like sort of blows all my that, mind. Yeah, yeah like that gold? Wow. all Ooh. of that intricacy and everything like that from a single piece, Yeah, you know? Nice. He made the incense altar of acacia wood, a cubit long and a cubit wide square and two cubits high. Its horns were one piece with it. He overlaid it with pure gold, its tops, its sides, round about and its horns. And he made a gold molding for it round about. He made two gold rings for it under its molding on its two walls on opposite sides as holders for the poles with which to carry it. He made the poles of acacia wood and overlaid them with gold. He prepared the sacred anointing oil and the pure aromatic incense expertly blended. That's right. We got that last week. Any, uh, any comments or should we keep going? We have Dr. Ed, I don't know if you know this, but we have two uh, portions tonight. So we have to really kind of cruise through them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Baraka, would you want to take it at 38.1? Let's try it. Yes. He made the altar burnt offering of acacia wood five cubits cubits long and five cubits wide square and three cubits high he made horns for it on its four corners the horns being of one piece with it and he laid it upper he made pencils of the, the pills the scrapers the basins the flesh hooks, and the fire pans. He made all these utensils copper. He made for the altar a grating of meshwork in copper extending below under its ledge to its middle. He cast four rings at the four corners of the copper grating for the pole and overlaid them with copper. And he inserted the poles into the rings on the side walls of the altar. To carry it by them, he made it hollow. 
hollow of boards. He made the lover of copper and its stand of copper from the mirrors of the women who performed tasks at the entrance of the tent of meeting. Starts at number nine. I'm sorry, I can't get it any higher up. But it starts here. Yeah. The enclosure on the south side and on the south side, a hundred cubits of hangings of. Okay, if if we hold on to our, for a second, Michael, if you go back to the um, yeah. uh, to to the comments. Okay. Okay, if you take a look in there, mirrors. Okay, according to them, they took a burnished copper, you know, so that it would reflect because what we call mirrors were not invented for thousands of years after that. Ah. Uh, wow. Wow. Awesome. What are the women, what are the women performing tasks? Can we keep going with that? Dr. Michael? Women? Uh, well, well, actually, it's, it's in that part of uh, the comments. Yes, exactly. It's right there. Okay. The Hebrew is obscure, it says. The women is implied by the feminine form. Uh, hot, hot, it's, yeah, we, we, hot, yes, hot, we assume it is women. Which is taken here to mean arrayed for a sacred task. So it's yeah. uh, there's a lot of, I guess it's not very clear. Okay. Yeah. Then he goes to Samuel. Okay. Uh, why don't we start again? Uh, how about from uh, nine again, Baraka? He made the enclosure on the south side, a hundred cubits of hangings of fine twisted linen for the enclosure with their 20 posts and their 20 sockets of copper, the hooks and brands of the posts being silver. On the, on the north side, a hundred cubits with their 20 posts and their 20 sockets of copper, the hooks and bands of the posts being silver. On the west side, 50 cubits of hangings with their 10 posts and their 10 sockets, the hooks with bands of the posts being silver. And on the front side, to the east, 50 cubits, 15 cubits of hangings on the one flank, with their three posts and their three sockets and 15 cubits of hangings on the other flank on each side of the gate of the enclosure with their three posts and their three sockets. All the hangings around the enclosure were of fine twisted linen. The sockets for the posts were of copper. The hooks and bands of the posts were of silver. The lay of their tufts was of silver. All the of the enclosure were banded with silver. The screen of the gate of the enclosure done in embroidery was of blue, purple, and Sorry, I've lost our place a little bit. Uh, they, uh... Where are we? I'm sorry. All right, if I started here, bands of. I finished where it said blue and purple. Oh, okay. Yep, there it is. Okay. Blue and purple, right, right up here. Where it's blue, purple, and crimson yarns and fine twisted linen. It was 20 cubits long. Its height or width was five cubits like that of the hangings of the enclosure. The posts were four. Their four sockets were of copper. Their hooks of silver. And the overlay of their tops was of silver, as were also their bands. All the pegs of the tabernacle and of the enclosure round about were of copper. Awesome. And I believe that does it for this portion. Whoops. Kind of went. Yep. Nice. Okay, so let's move forward. 
to the next the next uh parsha is which one gary it's the it's oh there you go there you okay go. does anyone want to pick up um the first uh of this part parsha it's exodus 38 yep uh here it is 3821 oh dr ed i see i see <laughs> hello <laughs> there. go for it dr ed these are the records of the tabernacle the tabernacle of the pact, which were drawn up at Moses' bidding, the work of the Levites under the direction of Ithamar, son of Aaron the priest. Now, Bezalel, son of Uri, son of Hur, of the tribe of Judah, had made all that the Eternal had commanded Moses. At his side was Ohoboliab, son of Ahish Sameach of the tribe of Dan, carver and designer and embroiderer in blue, purple, and crimson yarns and in fine linen. All the gold that was used for the work in all the work of the sanctuary, the elevation offering of the gold of gold came to 19 talents and 730 shekels by the sanctuary weight. The silver of those of the community who were recorded came to 100 talents and 1,775 uh, shekels by the sanctuary rate. A half shekel a head, half a shekel by the sanctuary weight for each one who was entered in the records from the age of 20 years. 603, 550 men. The 100 talents of silver were for casting the sockets of the sanctuary and the sockets for the... I'm gonna have one second, please. I got something there. It's, can you lower this a bit, a minute, please? A little bit for the curtain, 100 sockets for the talents a talent, a socket, and the 1,775 shekels, he made hooks for the posts, overlay for the tops, and brands around them. The copper from the elevation offering came from seven detail. Did I, did I, am I? Okay. Yeah, there's just some, <laughs> there's some repetition a little bit. Going okay. Through. Yeah. The copper from the elevation offering came to 70 talents, and 2,400 shekels. Of it, he made the sockets for the entrance of the talent of meeting, the copper altar and its copper grating and all the utensils of the altar, the sockets of the enclosure round about the sockets of the gate of the enclosure and, the, and all the pegs of the tabernacle and all the pegs of the enclosure round about. Of the blue, purple, and crimson yarns, they all made the service vestments for officiating in the sanctuary. They made Aaron's sacral vestments as the Eternal had commanded Moses. The ephod was made of gold, blue, purple, and crimson yards and fine twisted linen. They hammered out sheets of gold and cut threads to be worked into designs among the blue, the purple and the crimson yards and the fine linen. They made it for it attaching shoulder pieces. They were attached to its two ends. The decorated band was upon it was made like it of one piece with it of gold, blue, purple and crimson yards and fine twisted linen as the eternal had commanded Moses. They boarded the lazuli stones with frames of gold, engraved with seal engravings of the names of the sons of Israel. They were set on the shoulder pieces of the ephod as stones of remembrance for the Israelites, as the Eternal had commanded Moses. The breastpiece was made in the style of the ephod, of gold, blue, purple, and crimson yards, and fine twisted linen. It was square. They made the breastplate doubled, a span in length and a span in width doubled. They set in it four rows of stones, 
The first row was a row of carnelian, uh, chrysolite, and emerald. Emerald. The second row was turquoise. Was a this, turquoise. Yeah, this is right up your alley, isn't it, Doctor? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Now where I am, I, I'm sorry. There's on top, a, on top. A, a sapphire and an amethyst. The third row, a jathans and an agate and a crystal. And the fourth row, a beryl, a lapis lazuli and a jasper. They were encircled in the mountains with frames of gold. The stones corresponded in number to the names of the sons of Israel, 12 corresponding to the names engraved like seals each with the name for the 12 tribes. On the breastplate, they made braided chains of corded work in pure gold. They made two frames of gold and two rings of gold and fastened the two rings at the two ends of the breastplate, attaching the two golden cords to the two rings at the ends of the breastplate. They then fastened the two ends of the cords to the two frames, attaching them to the shoulder pieces of the ephod at the front. They made two rings of gold and attached them to the two ends of the breastplate at it is inner edge, which faced the ephod. They made two other rings of gold. Can I go up? I lost my place because it's it's so it's so repetitive. Wow. Yeah. Uh, a little bit down, please. Yeah. Just a hair down. There you go. Okay. They made two other rings of gold and fastened them on the front of the ephod, low on the two shoulder pieces, closed to the seam above and the decorated band. The breastplate was held in, a, in place by a cord of blue from its rings to the rings of the ephod. So the breastplate rested on the decorated band and did not come loose from the ephod as the Eternal had commanded Moses. The rush. Should I continue? Does anyone want to pick up? Uh, who hasn't read yet? Dr. Michael or Gary? No, go ahead. Hello. All right. Hello. right. The robe for the aphod was made of woven work of pure blue. The opening of the robe in the middle of it was like the opening of a coat of mail with the binding around the opening so that it would not tear. On the hem of the robe, they made pomegranates of blue, purple, and crimson <laughs> yarns twisted. They also made bells of pure gold and attached the bells between the pomegranates all around the hem of the robe between the pomegranates. A bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate all around the hem of the robe for officiating in as the Eternal had commanded Moses. They made the tunics of fine linen of woven work for Aaron and his sons and the head dress of the fine of fine linen and the decorated turbans of fine linen, and the linen breeches of fine twisted linen, and sashes of fine twisted linen, blue, purple, and crimson yarns done in embroidery, as the Eternal had commanded Moses. They made the frontlet for the holy diadem of pure gold, and incised upon it the seal inscription, Holy to the Eternal. They attached to it a cord of blue to fix upon the headdress above, as the Eternal had commanded Moses. Thus was completed all the work of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. The Israelites did so just as the Eternal had commanded Moses. So they did. Then they brought the tabernacle to Moses with the tent and all its furnishings, its clasps, its planks, its bars, its posts, and its sockets, the covering of tanned ram skins, the covering of dolphin skins, and the curtain for the screen the Ark of the Pact and its poles and the cover, the table and all its utensils and the bread of display, the pure, pure lampstand, its lamps, lamps in due order, and all its fittings in the oil for lighting, the altar of gold, the oil for anointing, the aromatic incense, and the screen for the entrance of the tent, the copper altar with its copper grating, its poles and all its utensils, and the laver and its stand, the hangings of the enclosure, its posts and its sockets, the screen for the gate of the enclosure, its cords and its pegs, all the furnishings for the service of the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, the service vestments for officiating in the sanctuary, 
the sacral vestments of Aaron, the priest, and the vestments of his sons for priestly service, just as the Eternal had commanded Moses. So the Israelites had done all the work, and when Moses saw that they had performed all the tasks as the Eternal had commanded, so they had done, Moses blessed uh, them. Gary, if you can hold on just one second. Michael, I, I want to see if this thing works. I actually got a picture of what Aaron the priest looked like. So can you make me a co-host for a second? Let's see if this thing works. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Hold uh, on. Let me see. Share screen. Uh, hang on one second. I got to go somewhere. I got to do something. How do I get to participants? Okay. Now I go to Dr. Mike. Uh, edit the floor. It's an old family photo, right, Dr. Mike? Oh, yes. Absolutely. <laughs> like, great, great, great. I, I, I got it hanging. Yeah. Okay, so let me share screen. Uh, this one. Share. Oh, oh. Wow. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes. That's big. Now we see where you get your good looks, Dr. Mike. Wow. <laughs> yes, oh, bless minus you. the beard. Yeah, well, that's all you need yeah. is a beard and you're, you're in. Filene's basement. <laughs> what? Wow. <laughs> Do each of the <laughs> tribes have their own stone that they, that represents them? Okay, great question. The stones, okay, can you see the little um, yep. uh, the uh, the cross that I've got? Yeah. Okay, the two stones containing each one, this the six names uh, of the tribes. So if you multiply six times two, you get the 12. Mm -hmm. Is this one here and that one there? This stone and that one. See, mm -hmm. two stones. Each stone um, has engraved the six names of the tribe of Israel. So it's this one and that one. No. And now, and now you can see the the blue. You can see all of the the. the this is the breastplate mm -hmm. containing some of the other um, precious stones. Mm -hmm. so the ones containing the names was here on this shoulder, on that one, on that shoulder. What about the front piece with the with the stones? Are are right, those twelve? Okay. That, that, that is actually tribes? called the breastplate. And if you notice, you know, when you go to the temples, all of the the scrolls of the Torah they have a breastplate. Nice. And do now, I want to know how they got all of these stones in the desert. <laughs> Especially, I want to know how they got dolphin skins in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> we actually asked that question a couple of times. You know, yeah, uh, two, that's two, true. It's a question. Two, uh, two, two, six, two sessions ago. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, how, how, how are they going to get a, um, a fish? Mm -hmm. So must have taken it with them, right? The, the, I, I I don't have an answer. <laughs> I, I really don't. And and and, and Ed actually um, um, asked another question because one or two of those stones, the precious stones, so to speak, were mm -hmm. only found in Afghanistan, so they had to be brought into you know what was Canaan from mm -hmm. Afghanistan. Because they, they, they were not from Canaan. Uh, diamonds? Well, they, they, they're not really diamonds. You know, they're precious stones. You know, they have color. And then but it says see, right here, diamonds. Where, where do you Emerald, see sapphire, diamond. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Could they have taken these out of Egypt? When Remember when they were leaving Egypt? They, had a, they were almost, uh, everyone was giving them stuff. Get out of here. Here, take everything. Get, go. Well, I mean, you know, the gold, the silver, the copper, and all that kind of stuff, you know, that had to have come out of Egypt. Mm. And notice, too, on the hymn, what Gary was uh, talking about, the pomegranates and the bells. Right. I guess they must have made a little jingling noise, right, when they were walking yeah. around. Yeah. Well, so, you know, you know, one thing is, is to read it and something else is to see it. Okay, yeah, so I'm absolutely. going to stop share so that we can continue. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Mike, for that visual mm, representation. It's beautiful. And let me see. Share screen. Oh, uh, can you make me the, the host again so I can share? Oh, I have to do it. Okay, so let me go. To... Yeah, I can't make you co-host for some reason. Okay, I don't know why. Um, okay, so Mike Budo, you, you're going to be the 
you're going to be the host, right? So mm -hmm. uh, make host. Okay, change host. I think I did it. You got okay. it. You got okay. it. Excellent. All right. All right. Who wants to read? What's, uh, I forget where we were now. At 40, 40. Oh, Moses, we 40, I think. Yeah, 40. Dr. Michael, would you like to pick it up? At no, absolutely. Thank you. And the eternal one spoke to Moses saying, on the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. Place there the ark of the pact and screen off the ark with the curtain. Bring in the table and lay out its due setting. Bring in the lampstand and light its lamps and place the gold altar of incense before the ark, before the ark of the pact. Then put up the screen for the entrance of the tabernacle. You shall place the altar of burnt offering before the entrance of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. Now, it, this is interesting. Sometimes they talk about the tent of meeting and sometimes they talk about something else, but you know, in here it says the tent of meeting. Place the laver, between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Set up the enclosure roundabout and put in place the screen for the gate of the enclosure. You shall take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and all that is in it to, consec to consecrate it and all its furnishings and it shall be holy. Then, Anoint the altar of burnt offering and all of its utensils to congregate the altar so that the altar shall be the most holy. And anoint the laver and its stand to, to consecrate it. You shall, you shall bring Aaron and his sons forward to the entrance of the tent of meeting and wash them with the water. Put the sacral vestments on Aaron and anoint him and consecrate him that he may serve me as priest. Then bring his sons forward, put tunics on them and anoint them as you have anointed their father that they may serve me as priests. This their anointing shall serve them for everlasting priesthood throughout the ages. This Moses did just as the eternal had commanded him. So he did in the first I, month. I got to stop you here, Dr. Michael. What do you, what do you think when you're reading that line? Because you're part of this, uh, this, this uh, dynasty here, or this, yeah. Yeah. what do you think of that? That's amazing. right? Well, you know, you, you remember that, uh, you know, Aaron was the high priest yeah. and then he had four sons of which actually only two survived. Because, you know, two of them were um, killed in that strange fire that um, it mm -hmm. said it was an alien fire. Mm -hmm. uh, so only two were left. But theoretically, um, only the sons, direct male descendants of Aaron, could have been priests following, you know, following the priest. So this is what I see. So, you know, I have uh, the vision of Moses. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, of Aaron and his two sons. And wow. one of them was actually the one that uh, we are all, we, the um, Cohens, are all descended from. And that's Ithamar. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable history. That's awesome. And um, the other thing I wanted to point out too, just how many times that, that phrase comes out, just as the eternal commanded. Uh, and they did it, and he did it. I mean, that's that is so important right now, right? It's just such. I mean, because if they didn't do it, where would where would we be? Where would we be if they didn't do it? So, Doctor Michael, if you could continue, seventeen. Okay. In the first month of the second year, on the first day of, on the first of the month, the tabernacle was set up. Moses set up the tabernacle, placing his sockets, setting up his planks inserting his bars and erecting his posts. He spread the tent over the tabernacle, placing the covering of the tent on top of it, just as the Eternal had commanded Moses. He took the pact and placed it in the ark. See, in here we're calling it the pact. 
rather the okay so it, 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 it goes back and forth he fixed the poles of to the ark placed the cover on top of the ark and brought the ark inside the tabernacle he then put up the curtain for screening and screened off the ark of the pact just like the eternal had commanded moses he placed the table in the tent of meeting outside the curtain on the north side of the tabernacle, which is amazing because, you know, now what we do is that we face Jerusalem, but back in the days of the tabernacle, when you looked north, that's where you saw the Holy of Holies. Mm. So when, that we're makes saying, sense. Yeah. <laughs> when we're saying the pact, is that the Ten Commandments? Is that, that the... That's the Ten Commandments. Oh. That would, that would be the pact. Nice. Uh, so in, you know, another word for pact that they could have used, you know, would have been um, the 10 utterances or, or they could have said the um, the covenant. But in here, they're calling it the pact. Uh, a pact. A dude. OK. So I'm still reading from 20. I think it's 20. Uh, he took the pact and placed it in the ark. He fixed the poles of the ark. Oh, I, I think I read that already. At 22, I think we're at. At 22. He placed the table in the tent of meeting, outside the curtain on the north side of the tabernacle. Upon it, he laid out the setting of bread before the eternal, as the eternal had commanded Moses. By the way, there was a table, and there was, there was bread put on it. You remember that that's part of the um, uh, outer sanctuary. Where the bread was. In fact, it was called uh -huh. the bread table. The bread table? Yeah, the bread table. Right. Uh, and, and they changed the bread. I think it was daily. He placed the lampstand. The lampstand, in this case, of course, is the uh, menorah. Mm -hmm. The tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the... Okay. Oh, I wanted to bring up, didn't David eat the bread when she wasn't supposed to eat? Wasn't that part no, of it? No, David ate the. What, what, what was that, Mike? I thought wasn't there a story of David eating the bread in the in the tent of, oh. or in the. Okay. I don't know. Maybe. Well, we, we, have to look it up. You, you know, we're going to have to wait until we get to the Book of Kings. I know. <laughs> okay, and he lit the lamps before the Eternal, as the Eternal had commanded Moses. He placed the altar of God in the tent of meeting before the curtain. On it, he burned aromatic incense as the Eternal had commanded Moses. Then he put up the screen on the entrance of the tabernacle. At the entrance of the tabernacle of the tent of meeting, he placed the altar of burnt offering. On it, he offered up the burnt offering and the meal offering as the Eternal had commanded. Remember that, that some of the uh, animals were just consumed completely and some of the animals uh, were kept uh, you know, for eating for, for everybody. So that. That's what this thing is about. He placed a laver between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it for washing. This washing that he's talking about is for washing of the hands. Okay. So from it, Moses and Aaron and his sons. Well, ah, here we go. From, from, from it, Moses and Aaron and his sons would wash the hands and feet. We don't do that anymore. But we, do, we wash our hands. They wash them when they entered the tent of meeting and when they approached the altar, as the Eternal had commanded Moses, and he set up the enclosure around the tabernacle and the altar, and put up the screen for the gate of the enclosure. When Moses had finished the work, the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the presence of the Eternal filled the tabernacle. Theoretically, God appeared as a cloud. And the cloud was right in the entrance of the tent of meeting. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting. This is Moses, because the only ones that could come in there were the priests. Because the cloud had settled upon it and the presence of the eternal filled the tabernacle. When the cloud lifted, is somebody saying, saying something? Okay. When the cloud lifted from the tabernacle, the Israelites would set out on their various journeys. But if the cloud did not lift, they would not set out until such time as it did lift. For over the tabernacle, a cloud of the eternal 
rested by day and fire would appear in the cloud by night in the view of all the house of Israel throughout the journeys. So this is one big difference between us and many of the other religions. According to the Bible, as you can see in here, the presence of God was seen by everybody, not just one person. Amazing. Amazing. That, that is, and that's it for this week. We went through the double. We did the double, guys. Wow. Wow. And, and Michael, as you can see, you know, the, 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 to, to me, this is amazing. In these two portions, there's a little tiny piece about the Sabbath and everything else is about the, the tabernacle and the vestments. Yet, the Sabbath is the one that ended up being one of the commandments. Remember the Sabbath, for it is holy. That's true. That's true. And in here, all it has is a tiny little thing. <laughs> What's the, what, why, and that's, uh, and it, well, that was earth shaking too, to have a Sabbath. That was, wor that was world changing, wasn't it? That's it, what the it, rabbi it, said, yeah. Rabbi Meyer, I remember that. Yeah, no, nobody had it before this, if, uh, you know, because everybody would uh, work seven days a week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this was a uh, thing they said, no, uh, God rested and we rest. We rest, absolutely. So that's it, Dr. Ed, how are you? Cynthia, how was everybody? How's everything? Good. Fine, I've, thank you. I've been very busy. Lots going on. Yeah. And uh, so, so, Michael, so, what are you so, studying this week? We're I always going to ask you every week. <laughs> what are you preparing for? Um, we're still working on leadership, so I have my final exam next week. So I'll uh, I'll be busy next week with my final exam. And Ed, we told them that we expect an A plus <laughs> plus. <laughs> Well, it's more like, it's more like, I think I was telling you that was more, it's more like business school. It's more like, okay, this is how you get people to do something they don't want to do, you know? Uh, that's correct. That's right. <laughs> You've got to get them to do what they want, it, what, what you want them to do because they want to do it. They want to do it. They don't know how good it's going to be <laughs> once they do it. <laughs> yes. You got to paint the picture. Well, it's, you know, it's much easier in, in the Bible. God said, you do it. That's it. <laughs> Right, exactly. And then he had the fire and brimstone came out. And that's what we're like, ooh, okay, he's serious. This time he means it. <laughs> this time he means it, you know. That's amazing. Well, so, we voted. We're, we're, we're thinking about now, talk, we're talking about opening up the temple. Uh, oh, wow. On Fridays. On Fridays. And uh, on <laughs> April is going to be a little difficult. It will be open probably, but difficult because we've got multiple Saturday bar mitzvahs, but it looks like May we're going to be open for business. It'll be restricted because we've got to, we don't know what our, uh, and, uh, and, but the bottom line is that it looks like we'll be in, in good shape for uh, good shape to, to open up in May. Well, it's been lovely, everyone. As always, I, and Braca, you know, last week when you saw when you said that that statement, it, it was it really stayed with me all week long. It was that statement what when Moses was talking to the Eternal and in 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 saying, you know, blot me out of your your book, and uh, and you said it so well. And it was how we we can change. We can change the Eternal. The, the God is a, a force that we can work with right it's like how yeah. did you say it again and that's beautiful mike beyond that i did research that night because we couldn't come on a consensus as to why moses had just broken the tablets that people said that he had been angry people said that why did he get angry so i found a commentary that i thought was was significant because it says that what Moses was doing was protecting the people of Israel and he was doing it out of love. How was he protecting? Because he actually destroyed the incriminating evidence where it said, do not commit idolatry. Mm. Wow. Mm. So I think it was 1.30 in the morning and I sent it to Dr. Mike. Oh. By email? Yes, and I got it. I got it. Yeah. I saw it. Yeah. 
That's okay. incredible. That's interesting. So it was not not out of anger, not because he uh, felt indignity. It was none of that. He it, it's just that there is a whole paragraph. I think it's paragraph thirty four in the Parsha from last week, where it talks about the dangers dangers of idolatry. And what they had done was outright idolatry. Mm -hmm. And then I also found someplace else that they did it. This is the people who did it because they needed an idol, a God in, going in front. They felt this way they would be protected. Mm. Since Moses was not around, who was going to be in front to protect them as they walked through? Mm -hmm. So that's why they, they, they felt better once they created that golden calf. Mm. Okay, and Michael, a little Kabbalah taste for you and for everybody else. According to the Kabbalah now, the first set of uh, tablets was written by the finger of God. Mm -hmm. The second one was actually carved in the stone by Moses. But it also said that since Hashem did tell Moses, make a second set that should say just what they first said. I that meant, meant Hashem agreed with him having broken them. This is what the commentary that I read concluded. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because Hashem told Moses, okay, make another set. The, uh, identical to the first. Yeah, exactly. Wonderful. So if it were talking emotions, mm -hmm. it was not anger, it was not indignation, it was just love. It was wanting to protect the Jewish people, the Israelites. That's why he what, what he did. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Mike, what you said at the beginning, you remember that the Israelites left. Okay, they were not called Israelites yet. Yeah, yeah they were not called. They Israel. left. The Jewish people left, and also what was called. Mixed Rav's multitude. There are people who wanted to leave Egypt anyway. So they tagged on to the Jews. Yeah, and, and you remember that the reason why the, the word multitude was used before is that in addition to whoever the Jewish slaves were, there were also Egyptians and everybody else. So whoever um, was worshiping, uh, you know, doing the sin uh, of the golden calf, those were killed. And then the ones that remained were from that point on in the Bible, they're called Israelites. That's right. That's right. And what, what Mike started, the other Mike, what he started saying, I think is the essence of what prayer is. Because we can, we can have things changed if we can address Hashem the right way. And this is what Mike pointed to. This nice. is the essence of prayer. You see what happens when we get a double portion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay. You overdose. Yeah, you, you overdose. overdose. We did. We did. <laughs> well, thanks everyone tonight. I appreciate it so much. Have a great night. Have a great yeah. week. We'll see you on yeah. the no. Saturday or Friday oh, night. Oh. Either one. And I love Purim, by the way. You were great, Dr. Ed. You were wonderful. <laughs> 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 As always. Thank All you. Right. You take care, everybody. Good night. Right. See you later. Yeah. Bye.